certain serenity out there. But as we come out to Lokes Park, perched on the other side of the hill, we find the ground crammed with an all-ticket crowd of 12,000 for this third round tie between Wickham Wanderers of the Rothmans Isthmian League and First Division Middlesbrough. And here come Wickham Wanderers. And their first duty is to go to the centre of the pitch that's got an 11-foot slope from one touchline to the other, remember, and wave greetings to the club chairman, Jack Smithhurst, who's in hospital right by the ground. So they pay their tribute, and there's the chairman waving back with the handkerchief. Now the two teams, and what a contrast there is. Wickham with their furniture workers, their car workers, estate agents, school teachers, and three of them had to work this very morning. Middlesbrough make one change. Bobby Murdoch is out through suspension, and Peter Bryan wears the number seven shirt. So who do we look out for? Well, two of the Wickham side were in the Hendon team that got a draw in the Cup at Newcastle last year. One of them is young Gary Hand, the fullback. Another is the Wickham Wanderers skipper and the number five, Alan Phillips. And there's a man out there who's a legend in Wickham, and his name is Tony Horseman, so often the club's top scorer. One Middlesbrough player has been out on that sloping pitch before, and it's Graham Sownis who was there with the Spurs youth side. Here's Stuart Bohm, the Middlesbrough skipper, waiting for the toss-up with the Whip Wickham skipper, Alan Phillips. The referee of this cup tie, incidentally, is Mr. Porter from Bolton. And so now we get the toss-up, and that, in fact, was the first thing in the afternoon. There was one, in fact, by Wickham Wanderers, and they decided that the team should change ends. So after that friendly handshake, all is now ready. 12,000 inside the ground, and those who didn't get a ticket wait on the hillside outside. And now the noise really begins to swell around on the hills of Buckinghamshire as Middlesbrough kick off and straight back to their goalkeeper Jim Platt. They're attacking the goal on the right in the all red strip with the one white band. Wickham Wanderers in light blue shirts, dark blue shorts and light blue socks. Armstrong for Middlesbrough. Spraggan hitting it straight at bird's eye again and the pass wouldn't quite go through to Searle. Foggan with a header. Played out now to hand. Not a very good clearance. But it'll come nonetheless to Keith Searle. Searle again, nice bit of play there by Holyfield. Searle forward and Horseman couldn't keep it in. And another throw to Middlesbrough. John Craggs with the throw. David Mills turning it inside again. Madron there for Middlesbrough. And now Armstrong, but he's only given it to Perry, and Perry has gone past Spraggan. Horseman waiting in the centre. If he can only get it across, so too is Searle. And here's Reardon. But on that occasion, the slope seemed to beat him. Birdseye following in well, and getting in a shot. It's just the straight past the post. From Paul Birdseye, the fullback who linked up well with that promising Wickham attack. Now Foggan. Well, he's gone past Phillips. Still with Foggan, a long raking shot, and Maskell had to go down well to get that one. It's the sort of thing that Middlesbrough have got to try to uh, get this breakthrough. Good long raking shot by uh, Foggan. Phillips underneath this one for Wickham Wanderers. Feels to offside, he's all right. It's Horstman now with a shot. This time he is offside for him. He hits the first he's offside. But a little indication there of uh, the confidence in this uh, Wickham Wanderers play. Clearly he was offside, no, tall, no doubt at all about it. Mills is up. Brian has made a quick burst for him as well. And Phillips miscuing. It'll come for Brian. Peter Bryan and trying to get his shot in quickly but he was just a little too anxious and just a little too hasty no doubt about it at the moment uh, Wickham Wanderers are having uh, more of the game but as yet just cannot make that uh, vital breakthrough or that vital chance and Jackie Charlton smoking a number of cigarettes during the course of a game and he's got a fair bit on his mind at the moment so 
It's Bone as the whistle goes for half time. A good first half for the Wanderers. They've done all that could be asked of them as the referee blows that whistle. They've hustled Middlesbrough for all their worth. They've worked and they've shown the first division side that they're really in the middle of a battle. And the managers will be going off now. There's uh, Brian Lee going in. And Jackie Charlton as well. But as the teams go in at half time here at Lokes Park, the half time score in this third round FA Cup tie is Wickham Wanderers nil, Middlesbrough nil, and we'll be right back with the second half. Welcome back to Lokes Park in High Wickham in Buckinghamshire. Wickham Wanderers now attacking the goal to our right. Nil nil in this third round FA Cup tie. straight away to Wickham people who know say that Wickham have looked the better side in the first half because they've been playing more on top of the slope so I suppose we should see a lot of movement down their right wing in this half as opposed to their left wing in the first half I wonder if Middlesbrough will have caught on to that so it's a throw then to Middlesbrough with Frank Spraggan Hickton and Foggan and now Horseman played on this time for Kennedy got his shot in bouncing awkwardly perhaps there towards Jim Platt I think uh, he caught his uh, foot a little bit Kennedy there and Horseman played on for Searle played on the left there for Holyfield oh and he's outstripped Brian very well indeed looking to get the cross in across the face of the goal just past that post by Perrin. Brilliant run down the left there by Holyfield, outstripping Brian. He got in a low and dangerous cross, and Perrin could only just push it wide of that post. The closest we've been to a goal. Perrin. Armstrong away. Foggan. Good swift challenge and a little touch on there by Kennedy now for Perry curled in again. Now oh, is that the shot? Oh, and it's just a fraction wide there by Holyfield. And Wickham are showing much more firepower in this second half. Again a low cross. Again it came to Holyfield. And just wide. Oh, Spraggan misdirecting that header for the come for Horseman. And now for Perrin, all will go on again, and finally it was Madrin who's uh, acting as a sweeper and doing so well for Middlesbrough, who got that one away. Perrin again. Okay. So the pressure again is on Middlesbrough. Again, the necks are craning behind that Middlesbrough goal, hoping that they're going to see a Wickham Wanderers goal. Be Terry Reardon again who's going to take the free kick. And again, Middlesbrough have paid Wickham the respect of bringing everybody back. Hit firmly and low. And not in just a fraction wide by Phillips. Thought for a moment that that was the moment. But a firmly hit cross there. And Phillips was no more than six inches wide. Well, they've waited a long time for a goal. They've just got five minutes left now. <laughs> Substitute Evans. Throw going to Wickham Wanderers. The referee's looked at his watch. He's signaling to both linesmen. So if Wickham are going to do anything, it's got to be done very, very quickly now. But at least it looks as though they've earned themselves a good payday with a return to Ayrson Park. It's a nil-nil draw. And in many ways, that's a victory for Wickham Wanderers, certainly for the character of the side, for the determination and for the skill they've shown. None more so than the man you saw there, Alan Phillips, the skipper. He's had a tremendous game at the back with uh, Keith Mead. And coming forward... They've always caused anxiety to Middlesbrough. They've hustled Middlesbrough out of their stride from beginning to end. And the smiles show that the sort of spirit that the match has been played in. 
a real credit to Wicker Wanderers Football Club in the third round for the first time in their 90-year history. Maybe not the victory they wanted, but certainly they avoided any sort of disgrace and got themselves a draw and a replay at Ayrson Park as the players go back into those dressing rooms. And there's no doubt whatsoever about it that Middlesbrough are more than relieved to have got that goalless draw. What did you think of your team's performance today? Very good, very good. Fighting performance. I think we deserved what we got. Did you have a feeling we were going to win it? Yes, I thought uh, if the header had gone in, that would have been it. Honestly, you feel you have a realistic chance in the replay, or is your moment of glory gone? No, I don't think so. I, I think that we showed in patches what we could do. Uh, and I think we must have had them worried. Uh, Alan Phillips' header was just wide, and these sort of things could have turned the game completely. I felt that if we had have scored, that we would have won the game. Uh, but it's all square when we go back to Ayrson Park, and I, I think we've got a very good chance. Jack, the, the fellas behind you, how much of a fright did they give you today? Fright? I, I haven't stopped smiling since the end of the game. <laughs> but what about the 90 minutes before that? Well, uh, we'll not get put on the rack as much f for as long a time as we were today. And I was delighted with the result. Neil Dill draw suited us fine, you know, but... Uh, I don't think we really deserved it. Were you ever desperately afraid that it would go the other way? That we I asked Jimmy how long it was to go, and he said 25 minutes. He said, we'll never make it. <laughs> serious? Serious, serious. What is it about their play that surprised you? Well, you expect them to put challenge in, and you expect them to do running, but they do it in such a good way, you know. I mean, they held balls on and put good pros under pressure like that and get knock-ons, and people are prepared to back up and chase people. And they cause us a hell of a lot of problems today. They never allow us to string any passes together, or any game together. The close is tight, made it very difficult for us. And all in all, it was uh, a one I'm glad to see behind with. Did you think your fellows played as well as they could? I was delighted to where we back played because the amount of pressure that was put on them and the, the sort of balls that they were having to deal with all the time, they, uh, they had to be strong and resolute, and then they were. And all in all, that's where we got the re result today because we were back four. And the slope? Well, this club's frightening, isn't it? I was kept watching. <laughs> I kept watching balls come towards me, and our lads were stopping, thinking they were going out, and the bloody things are staying five yards in play. <laughs> and they were, you know, it's it's just something that uh, it's a great advantage to them. And a little slope. You haven't got a slope at Ayrson Park. It's that's dead it. flat. <laughs> it's very big, and they're going to get a chase, and they're going to have to chase as hard as we did on Saturday today. A final word, Jack, if you turn around and tell them what you really thought of them today. I thought you were magnificent, really, I did. You know, you frightened me to death. It's one of those times when I wish to hell I'd be the manager. <laughs>